hidden deep in the corners of the known world, on the far eastern shores of the Thunder Mountains, amidst the merciless black ocean, is an island. Though unassuming, it is a fierce and brutal place. Its unforgiving waters and cragged coastlines make even the most experienced seafarer take pause and reconsider their route. There's something to be said about an economy that supplements itself with the shipwrecks that dot its shores. Its lands are perilous and nearly impossible to journey. The labyrinth-like forests are home to bandits and marauders, and stalked by bizarre, vicious beasts. The winter months are frigid, long, and arduous. The warm seasons are short-lived and often smothered with thick fog. Outsiders, who rarely tread here on purpose, have ridden it off as godforsaken, giving it the colourful title of the Isle of the Dead. The locals, more simply, refer to their home as Annum, as it has been called for countless years. Residents have a difficult time understanding the reputation that the outsiders have built. Sure, the island is harsh and requires a certain level of tenacity to endure, but they know it could always be worse. After all, any purebred Anumian is a surviving ancestor of the Devastation, a great storm and subsequent tsunami that ravaged the island 100 years ago. It wiped out 80% of the population, leaving only the tough, and lucky, behind. Legends say the storm was a mysterious phenomenon, a series of natural disasters that resembled a battle of the elements. The tsunami that followed racked the island, destroying all that was left behind. Survivors rebuilt from the ruins, some of which can still be found abandoned to this day. But while most depend on hardened grit to endure such a place, Phineas J. Pennyfeather seems to make do with a powerful optimism. A small halfling from humble beginnings, he found his fortune in the propriety of inn and tavern keeping. It was a life he enjoyed for a while, providing comfort and hot meals to weary travellers who late into the night would regale him with tales of far-off lands and savage monsters. Phineas was always rather unambitious when it came to travel, and he was never one for thrill-seeking, but each anecdote left him with a feeling of deep longing, as if he was missing something. The life of an innkeep soon became boring and repetitive. No longer could he sit idly by and hear about the world happening around him, he had to see it for himself. So, the little halfling mustered up what courage he could, and set out on the trails of Annum, determined to never look back. At first, danger found him quite easily. It lurks around every corner in Annum after all, and a small halfling travelling alone in such a great forest is an odd sight indeed. He was an easy target for thieves, cons, and all of those savage monsters he was warned about. Any sane halfling would count their losses and hurry back home, but Phineas thrived on the adrenaline, and before long was an expert navigator. He crossed every inch of the island, becoming a staple amongst the many communities, but never settling anywhere for too long. He explored strange and beautiful lands, learning of new cultures rooted in eons of tradition. He met brave and mighty warriors, even fought alongside them in battle once or twice. He studied the ways of earth magic, and became a worthy mage in his own right. He met the different elemental lords, and bared witness to their great power. He saw all the good and evil, love and hatred, beauty and beastliness of the world, and gained appreciation for its delicate balance. But as the years passed and Phineas grew older, he knew it would soon be time for his adventures to come to an end. He wasn't as quick on his feet as he once was, and even routine trading errands were taking their toll. One evening, after a particularly tiring expedition to Sol's Landing, he set up a camp, built a small fire, and weighed his options. Perhaps he would return home and resume innkeeping, 
or maybe retire to the quiet life of a storyteller. Neither idea spurred on the feelings of excitement he craved, but what other choice did he have? As he stoked the fire, he found himself recalling some time he had spent at an inn on the east coast. The Flaming Bastard, as it was known, was famous and beloved amongst Anum. It was staffed by a bunch of burly and grizzled dwarves, led by one called Fats. Fats had a fiery and effervescent personality, and the inn reflected it. The walls were pitted with wounds from dozens of axe throwing contests, and the tables were sticky and stained with spilled ale. There was an unspoken truce, all grudges were to be left at the door, and any disagreements could wait until morning. This, combined with its secluded location, and lack of any traditional forms of law and order, attracted all sorts of folks from all corners. It was one of the first places Phineas had stumbled upon after he left home. He had become lost travelling south of Applevale, and was ill-equipped to spend more than a night or two in the wilderness on his own. Just as he was beginning to lose hope, he began to hear something in the distance. The sounds of thunderous laughter and melodic sea shanties filled the air. He followed it, and soon the barren forests became lit with the soft glow of lantern fire. Fats took him in, gave him a place to stay, a hot meal, and a frothy ale. The rest was history. But the place had been abandoned years ago. Even so, his memories were clear. That same nagging urge he had felt so many years before filled his chest. Something in him longed to see the old inn again. He knew it was nothing but a couple of empty buildings, probably dilapidated and rotting by now, but he had formed so many friendships and happy memories there, it warranted one final visit. The trip would take him about four days. It wasn't a challenging route, the inn was right on the ocean, all one had to do was follow the passage along the eastern shore towards Applevale. However, the boisterous laughter and song that filled the once animated forests was gone, leaving behind an eerie silence. For such a desolate location, it had always been busy with customers. Fats was a talented brewer, and distilled the finest dwarven ales and meads on the island. People came from all over to try them, and business showed no signs of slowing down. Phineas never quite understood why Fats would shut down such a lucrative endeavour. When he once asked him about it, Fats angrily mumbled something about Lord Fire, but refused to elaborate. The closer Phineas got to his old stomping grounds, the more familiar things became. The twisted birch trees and pheasant's nests were like a living map. But he noticed something odd. The encompassing paths which had overgrown years ago were newly worn and in use. Squatters, perhaps? He took caution and silently approached on the southern trail. From the trail, he could see a small group gathered on the steps of the inn. Chatting amongst themselves, they stood in a small circle, looking a bit confused and disoriented. Phineas stayed hidden in the trees and watched them for a few moments, trying to detect any signs of danger. But it quickly became obvious they were no threat. They were a group of misfits, to say the least. Among them were elves, fauns, humans, dwarves, damn near every race that inhabited the island. Their shabby clothes looked to be from a number of different groups and tribes, but nothing that resembled pirate or marauder uniform. They looked out of place, unorganised and lost. Phineas got the impression they sought shelter, and mistook the inn for open. He chuckled and decided he'd better introduce himself and offer help. But as he approached the group, he took pause. Again, the memories flickered through his mind, and that same nagging feeling came over him. Axes flying, people shouting, the tastes of bittersweet ales and warm, savoury stews. He thought of the friends he made, and the women he'd loved. He couldn't bear to leave this place to rot any further. And if a group such as this needed shelter, perhaps he could be the one to provide it. Maybe journeying home wasn't in the cards. Not just yet. Maybe it was time for Phineas to have one final adventure.